It's my honor now to call upon the very distinguished uh, senator from the 24th, the 24th, uh, to recognize a very special guest in which we have with us today. Thank you, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, uh, I think we have a special event here this morning that you're going to enjoy very much. In the course of a lifetime, you meet some people that when you meet them, you know they're good. And so was the case with me in one of my counties, in my district, Overthorpe County, which I have a lot of friends. But I went to a meeting one night, and I met this young man. And immediately he had an impact on my heart and mind because I believed immediately that this was a man of God, a red-blooded American, a man that participated in his community. I could tell that he, he just was a good person. I don't know what it was. I felt it. And he had a, uh, later on, he was called up to, to recite the Declaration of Independence. And he boggled my mind. And I told him, I said, young man, I never met you before, but I want, if I can make it possible, for you to come to the Senate chambers where I stay sometime and express yourself to those good senators. And so that is here this morning. Before I introduce to you, Mr. Paul, I want to introduce to you, and I hope you'll give him a round of applause, them a round of applause. First of all, his son, Andy Paul. He, and I had no shoes, a good young man. He is the president of the FFA of this great state of Georgia. I predict that he's got a future in anything he ever wants to be. Uh, I want you to meet him, and you'll sense that as well. And he has with him also today Mr. Paul's um, boss, so to speak, the CEO and the manager of the Rail Electric Corporation, wanted to come because he's like me. He's proud of this family, too. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. The boss of this good man, Mr. Griffin, from over there in rail, right where I go through all the time. I'm going to stop and see you sometime. Ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you our guest and special event person here today, Mr. Paul. Where are you at? And he's going to, I think, make you stand up and take notice. Mr. Paul. Well, good morning. It's a pleasure and honor to be here with you today. Uh, I thank Senator Jackson for the invitation. I uh, have a lot of respect for every one of you sitting out there. I, I count some of you as good friends. Uh, I, I think, as the pastor said a while ago when he talked in the book of James, I think a lot of times in, in the age of Google that people don't keep the words of their faith in their mind, in their heart, like they need to, and also the words of our founding fathers. Uh, over 230 years ago, a group of men, not unlike yourself, got together and decided the fate of this country. And if you would, just uh, listen to the words that were written during that time and, and how relevant it is for us in today's time. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve political bands which have connected them to another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station which the laws of nature and nature's God entitled them, a decent respect to the opinion of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the assent of the governed, that whenever any form of government comes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it, and to institute new government, laying its foundations on such principles, and organizing its powers in such forms, as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transit causes, and accordingly all experiences have shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long trend of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object, invites their design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to thwart such government and provide new guards for the future securities. 
Such has been the patient suffrage of these colonies, and such is out of necessity which constrains them to alter the former system of government. The history of the present King of Great Britain is the history of repeated injuries and usurpations, all having in direct object the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. He has refused his assent to laws, the most wholesome and necessary for the public good. He has forbidden his government to pass laws of media and press and importance unless suspended in their operation till his assent should be obtained. And when so suspended, he is utterly neglected to attend to them. He has refused to pass other laws for the accommodations of laws, districts, and people unless those people would relinquish their right of representation in the legislature, a right inestimable to them and formal deterrence only. He has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the repository of their public record for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures. He has dissolved representative houses repeatedly for opposing with manly firmness his invasions on the rights of the people. He has refused for a long time after such dissolutions to cause others to be elected, whereby the legislative powers, incapable of annihilation, had been returned to the people at large for the exercise. The state remained in the meantime, exposed all the dangers to invasions from without and convulsions within. He has endeavored to prevent the population of these states for that purpose of obstructing the laws for naturalization of foreigners, refusing to pass others to encourage our migrations hither, and raising the conditions for new appropriations of land. He has obstructed the administration of justice by refusing to send to laws for establishing judiciary powers. He has made judges dependent on his will alone for the tenure of the offices and the amount and payment of the salaries. He has erected a multitude of new offices and sent here swarms of officers to harass our people and in out their substance. He has kept among us, in times of peace, standing armies without the consent of a legislator. He has effected to render the military independent of and superior to the civil power. He has combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our Constitution and unacknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to the acts of pretend legislation, for courting large bodies of armed troops among us, for protecting them by a mock trial from punishment for any murders which he should commit or the inhabitants of these states, for abolishing the free system of laws in a navy and promise, establishing therein arbitrary government and enlarging its boundaries, so as rendered at once an example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule into these colonies, for cutting off our trade with all parts of the world, for imposing tax on us without our consent, for depriving us in many cases of the benefits of a trial by jury, for transporting us beyond seas to be tried for ten defenses, for taking away our charter, abolishing the most valuable laws, and altering fundamentally the forms of our government, for spending on legislators and declaring themselves invested with power to legislate for us in all cases whatsoever. He has abdicated government here by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us. He's plundered our seas, ravaged our coasts, burned our towns, and destroyed the lives of our people. He is at this time transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the works of death, dissolution, and tyranny, already gone with circumstances of cruelty and perfidy, scarce to parallel in the most barbarous ages, and totally unworthy the head of a civilized nation. He has constrained our fellow citizens, taken captain on the high seas to be armies against their country, to become the executions of their friends or brethren, or to follow themselves by their hands. He has excited domestic insurrections among us, and has endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers to merciless and savage, whose known rules of warfare is undistinguished destruction of all ages, sexes, and conditions. In every stage of these oppressions, we have petitioned for redress in the most humble terms. Our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury. A prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may define a tyrant is unfit to be a ruler of a free people, nor be more than intention our British brethren. We have warned them from time to time of attempts by legislators to extend the unwarrantable jurisdiction over us. We have reminded them of the circumstances of immigration and settlement here. We have appealed to native justice and magnanimity, and we have conjured them by the ties of our common kindred to disavow these usurpations, which would inevitably interrupt our connection and correspondence. They too have been deaf to the voice of justice and continuity. We must therefore acquire the necessity which announces our separation and hold them as we hold the rest of mankind, enemies at war and peace friends. We therefore, the representatives of the United States of America, in general Congress, assemble 
appealing to the supreme judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions, do in the name and by the authority of the good people of these colonies solemnly publish and declare that these United Colonies are, and of right, ought to be free and independent states, that they absolve my allegiance to the British Crown, and that all political connections between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved, and that as free and independent, free and independent states they have full power to levy war, contract alliances, conclude peace, and do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do, and for the support of this exploration, with a firm alliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. That This was written by men not unlike yourselves who put the country above self. It is my hope and prayer that we'll always try to put country above self and make this the America that our forefathers want it to be. Thank you for the opportunity. It's been a great honor to be here. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you just met a great American. Okay.